good morning and welcome to our home for this uh, Eucharist on the second Sunday before Lent, Sunday the 7th of February. This time we're going to do things rather differently. You'll notice first of all that Christmas is over, so no Christmas tree, we took it down on candle mass the 2nd of uh, February, no crib scene, so we're back to normal, back to ordinary time. And we're going to do things differently as well because we're going to have more people sharing in the service and uh, we look forward to seeing them later on. So in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And also with you. As we come before the presence of our holy God, we recognise the times that we fail him. But we know that God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. For our faithlessness to you and to one another, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. For our forgetting of the poor and the broken, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. For our failure to cherish creation, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sin. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So let us say together, the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. When you are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So let us pray. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns supreme over all things, now and forever. Doth not wisdom quiet and understanding put forth her voice? The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning or the, ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth, when there were no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest parts of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the deck, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him, as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Chapter 1. He is the image of the invisible God, 
the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Whoever would become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up the cross and follow me. Hallelujah. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him and without him not one thing came into being. What has life? What has come into being in him was life, and the light was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh, and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We are speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This last week we have celebrated Candlemas, the end of Christmas, and for a couple of weeks now we enter into ordinary time. For months leading up to Christmas, shops, houses and streets had twinkling lights in trees and brightening windows, giving people something joyful to look at. Some houses had so many lights outside you could see it from the end of the road. In a particularly difficult time for our world, people had lights up that shone brighter and longer than ever before. During Advent, we lit our Advent candles, and although for the church it was different than what we were used to, as Christmas came, we celebrated the light of the world being born in Bethlehem. Light has been a significant theme in recent months. But come Boxing Day or New Year's Eve, many people took their lights down. Families removed their decorations. And the shops that were open were already stocking Easter eggs. The secular world started to move on quickly. We usually keep the crib up in church and often the Christmas tree if it lasts that long until Candlemas. Or the presentation of Christ in the temple as it's known. And at Candlemas we're reminded of years gone by where the church would bring all of the candles for the year ahead and bless them. And we'll be reminded that Jesus, Emmanuel, is with us all the time, even amidst the ordinary time that we enter into now. Ordinary time reminds us that God is with us, not just in the high days and the holy days, but every day, and particularly on the darkest days. 
this week's gospel passage reminds us of that too. In it, we're taken right back to creation. In the beginning was the word. Before the earth had been formed, when there was only darkness and chaos, God existed. And when he spoke, light pierced through the darkness and shape and life began to form. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. And for a while, the word had an address. And that word spoke into the lives of many. Does the word still speak today? In the beginning there was darkness and chaos and so often we hear of it still. When we hear of another terrorist attack, a natural disaster or something more personal to us. When we see people living on the streets or refugees drowning in an attempt to find somewhere to go. In the last 11 months, the world has been surrounded by the darkness and chaos of COVID-19. With sickness, isolation, loneliness and death. Do we hear the word in the acts of selflessness? Of courage as crowds run from danger while others run towards it? Do we hear the word in the messages of hope and new life? that come following the events that have changed the lives of so many? Do we hear the word as doctors and nurses care for ones we love or for us? When we see glimmers of light in the darkness, we hear the word. And do we see Christ in people's actions? Do we see him in the places where we see darkness? When we look into the face of the refugee, the homeless, the bereaved. When we look into the face of the medical professionals, teachers, delivery drivers and countless others who are keeping us safe and the country going. Do we see the face of Christ? And do those people see his face reflected back in us? The Gospel also talked of John, a man who was sent by God to witness, to testify to the light, so that others may come to believe through him. I wonder how many of us can say we have brought people to know Jesus, that we have testified to the light of Christ in our lives so that others have wanted it too. Do our words and actions reflect that light for others to see? A saying that I find helpful is, in the darkness we only need to light one candle and it will light the room. Jesus, the light of the world, is always there to be the light in the room. The candles received at baptism and confirmation re represent that light. And each time that I baptise someone, I tell them that throughout their lives, through the good times and the bad, to light their candle just for a moment. So they might be reminded of the light of the world in their lives. Then when darkness descends on them for whatever reason, they might remember that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. The light of Christ shines continuously. It will shine even through the darkest moments and it will not be put out, even when the darkness threatens to win. When God started the creation process, the world was chaotic and dark. And yet at the very beginning, he created one who would lighten that darkness for all of time. One night, a star shone brightly in the sky to lead the way to the birthplace of the light of the world. That word made flesh, who was born for us. Today the world is still messy. There's pain and darkness, illness, death, fear and loneliness. But there is also us. And somehow, sometime we can lighten someone else's darkness, leading the way to the word made flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. And in whatever way we can in these testing times, 
I pray we can testify to that light. Each of us are called and sent by God. May we bring others to know him too. Amen.
let us proclaim our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son who came into our world bring us back to you. Thank you that through him we can bring you our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our brothers and sisters in every land, and we ask that you be with them during this time of pandemic, that you care for them and protect them. Here in our own country, we pray for Archbishops Justin and Stephen, for our own Bishop Peter, and for the Bishop-designate Billy and also for Archdeacon Chris. Within our parish, we pray for Faye, and for Ray, and for Liz as she prepares to join our team here. And Father, we ask you that you watch over each one of us in our own homes. We may be in isolation from each other, but we know that we are never beyond your care, that you are always with us, watching over us. And we ask that you keep us strong in bonds of love for each other, that we can stay close to you and also close to each other, even though not physically, but still by keeping in touch. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Within our community, Father, we want to pray for the many who have lost jobs or who are facing the threat of losing their jobs because of the lockdown. We pray for those who are now trying to find other work, to find ways to provide for their families. And we also pray for all those who have suffered a loss of income at this time and who are struggling. And we thank you for the work of the food banks and of other agencies who are trying to help people in these difficult times. We remember also the homeless, Father, at this time of cold and wet, and ask that you may protect them, help them to find places of safety and warmth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, as we see so many sick still at the moment, we ask for your healing upon them. We thank you for the work of the doctors and nurses as they give themselves selflessly to care for people in every possible way. We thank you for all hospital workers and carers, and we ask for your protection upon all of them as they work in such difficult circumstances. And we pray for your continued blessing on the vaccination program that more and more people may be kept to receive some immunity from this illness. And we also pray, Father, for those in other countries that this vaccination may become available to them also. Within our community, Father, we pray for the teachers working so hard teaching online and for the children and young people who are studying in such a different way, doing things online without the companionship of the others in their classes. Father, may you help them to still be able to concentrate, to learn and to grow. And we pray for those who are having to go into school to work there, that you may bless and protect them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
As we look at the wider world, Father, we see many places where people are not only coping with the sickness that is coming upon them, but also with situations which endanger their lives because of violence. This week we think especially of Myanmar or Burma, where there's been a military coup. We pray for our brothers and sisters in that country for whom things were already difficult. And we pray for other minority groups of both religious and ethnic groups, that you may protect them from any harm. Father, we bring to you those who are refugees and asylum seekers. We ask that you will help them to find places of safety and that those they come in contact with may treat them with respect and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, among those who are known to us, we've brought to you many who have been ill over these last weeks. We thank you for those who are continuing to recover. We also, though, keep praying for Cicel and for Hillary, that you may bring full healing to them. We remember those many who have died during this week, Father, and especially we remember by name Captain Tom. We thank you for the inspiration that he was to so many, and we thank you that he showed us that whether we are young or old, we can act in ways that show care for other people. And so, Father, we commit him to your mercy and ask for your comfort for his family at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you that you are indeed our Father, that you listen to us and care for us. And so we say together, merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers, prayers for the, for the sake, sake of your Son, our, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. And Father, we pray for Veronica Brown who has been poorly in hospital with COVID. We pray that she will know your peace and love as she's been re readmitted to hospital after one admission already. We pray for the doctors and nurses who care for her, for her family who love her. In Jesus' name, Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us pursue all that makes for peace and build up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So at this stage we offer each other a sign of God's peace, God's shalom. We either do it in person to those who are in the house with us, or we do it across the internet or even over the phone to those we're not in contact with and we wish you God's shalom. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, to become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, 
He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms to us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us. He revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of St. Martin, St. Alban, St. John the Divine, Mary the Mother of God and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. So let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though, Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
the body of Christ broken for us all. The blood of Christ shed for us all. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. Now, as this time of pandemic continues, as we're still isolated from each other, Many can't share the bread and the wine physically, but you can fully receive the benefits of this Eucharist by engaging in this act of spiritual communion. Give thanks for the saving death and resurrection of Jesus and ask him to be with you now. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me, since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. So let us pray. God our Creator, by your gift, the tree of life was set at the heart of the earthly paradise and the bread of life at the heart of your church. May we who have been nourished at your table on earth be transformed by the glory of the Saviour's cross and enjoy the delights of eternity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, God, we thank, thank you for you feeding us, us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Well, that brings us toward the end of our service together. It's a delight to share in this way, not as good as being face to face, but still, we're coming together before our glorious Lord. So we trust the different way we've done things this day has been a blessing to you. And we would like more and more of our congregation here in Bethany South to get involved in this by doing reading, sharing in the prayers, and uh, helping us in many ways to make this a corporate service of worship before our God, but getting together to worship God even though we're separated. The Lord be with you. And also with you. So God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Rest upon you and remain with you and all those for whom you pray this day and forevermore. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.